Are we alone? That's the big question, isn't it? The question that ends all questions. Is there life out there, somewhere far away, nestled amongst the stars? Can planet Earth possibly be the sole point in the entire universe where the random bubbling of undersea chemicals created a single strange compound that was capable of making more of itself? Is there no one out there traveling the galaxy in that cold, empty vacuum of space? Are we really alone? But there's also a second question, one that's just as big, with as many world-shaking ramifications for humanity if we ever had reason to ask. What would it mean if we weren't alone after all? What if somehow, some way, planet Earth was visited by some form of extraterrestrial life, one that, for whatever reason, saw fit to attempt to make contact with the human race? Well, today on Astroapics, we're going to explore what that moment might be like, who, if anybody, might be coming to visit, and what such a universe-changing event would really do to humanity. Now, the concept of first contact can go a lot of different ways, and in order to have a focused discussion about the subject, we're going to have to begin by ruling out some scenarios. We're going to assume that first contact isn't just, say, finding some bacteria on Mars, but is a process in which we encounter an advanced civilization that uses some sort of language that humans can perceive and has access to spacefaring technology that would allow them to visit the planet Earth. We're also going to assume a little bit about their intent, specifically that First contact doesn't just consist of flying saucers vaporizing cities without explanation, or the entire planet getting bulldozed to make way for some sort of hyperspace bypass. Instead, we'll assume that this alien race is interested in having some sort of dialogue with humanity. That doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't going to wipe us out, but they'd at least like to, you know, have a little cup of tea before they do fire up the space lasers. And lastly, we're going to include a disclaimer. We like all of you, are very interested in the whole UAP, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, debate playing out in the US government right now, but we've either already brought you a video on that subject, or will in the near future. Uh, it just depends on what order we decide to publish these in. But for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to put the UAP controversy firmly to one side, and perhaps revisit that topic if something ever concrete comes out of it. We can hope. But who knows? Now, there are two basic possibilities for how an alien civilization would find its way to Earth. Either they stumble upon our presence, or they receive one of the messages that humanity beams out from the Earth in the hopes that someone might hear it. The way that humans send interstellar messages dictates which sort of civilizations are likely to receive them, because the best way to send those messages is to do what's called techno-signatures. These might be radio signals, like the ones beamed towards various corners of the galaxy intentionally, or released in the form of earthly transmissions. It might be the presence of compounds that extraterrestrials could observe in the Earth's atmosphere, like chlorofluorocarbons that just never exist in nature. Similarly, satellite swarms around a planet or large-scale space engineering would be a pretty good sign that someone seems to inhabit a given planet. These are observable signals that humans can and do look for around the universe, but as NASA explains, Earth's own searching tools are only capable of capturing really massive and advanced pieces of technology. That means that a civilization that surrounds our own stage of development located somewhere else in the universe probably wouldn't be able to see us any more than we could spot another civilization that are relatively early stage of advancement. Now, the implication is that if some sort of alien civilization were to find us first, then they would almost certainly need to have technology that we don't, including very precise, very sensitive equipment that could perceive the relatively limited indicators of human existence that someone could see from light years away. So if somebody did show up on our collective doorstep, they're probably going to be far more technologically advanced than we are. They'd have better equipment, better command of science, and quite possibly better plans in place than we do in order to make introductions. More than likely, they'll also have better weapons than we do, meaning that it'll be up to them to decide whether this is going to be a friendly hello or a hostile takeover with some sort of space laser. In terms of just who or what steps out of a spaceship to shake their first human hand, scientists have a few different takes. Some, like Simon Conway Morris of Cambridge, stress the importance of convergence evolution. That is to say that there are common pathways that different species take to evolve, like making tools or boasting big, big brains. That means that even though extraterrestrials might have horns or six arms or breathe through their skin, 
skin, they'll probably at least be somewhat similar to humans, making first contact much more a trip to the Star Wars cantina than an attempt to hold a conversation with a sentient slime mold. Then there's the possibility that extraterrestrial organisms wouldn't touch down on Earth at all, preferring to leave first contact to artificial intelligence in the form of robots. There's a few reasons for this one. It's not inconceivable that a robot would more easily be able to acquire language skills in the tongues of its new hosts, and if we humans were to get a little bit rowdy instead of cooperating with an alien visitor, that robot isn't going to be killed in the same way that an alien would be. Ultimately, the machines that come to visit might not be robots at all, but vessels for an alien intelligence that once existed inside an organism, similar to how many scientists believe that humans will eventually be able to upload their own consciousnesses into a digital medium. Now. Meeting an alien species would be an experience utterly unlike anything human beings have ever experienced before, but it would be far from the first time that we've done some sort of first contact with an unknown group of people. Take the example of first contact between Eurasia and the New World in the late 1400s and the 1500s, or the ongoing occasional instances of first contact that modern day humans still share with previously uncontacted and remote tribes. Now, unfortunately, these examples haven't exactly gone brilliantly. Generally, the less advanced civilization in a first contact scenario has a pretty awful time in the aftermath, and given that humanity is almost certainly going to be the less advanced civilization in our scenario today, things don't really bode well based on uh, history. But humans aren't without a plan to handle this situation if it were to ever arise. In the speculative realm, writers and philosophers have played with the concept for thousands of years, and all the more so in the 20th and 21st centuries. But in the United States, NASA has a more concrete plan, enshrined in a document called Declaration of Principles Concerning the Conduct of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Now. That mouthful, on a basic level, calls for extremely careful handling of non-earthly biomatter because of its potential to cause harm, whether it's a single-celled organism or a 20-eyed alien named Blork. But it also calls for full public transparency, research, public addresses, and even contact between us and a sentient being, all beamed out for the world to see and understand as best they can. And unfortunately, that's kind of where the plan ends, at least the plan that's available in the public domain. It's important to consider here that there may be national or even international contingency plans in the event that a nation was to make contact with extraterrestrials, and in a world where tens of thousands of pencil-pushing bureaucrats around the world earn a living drawing up contingency plans that will probably never be used, it's not inconceivable that a few of them would have worked on the alien question here and there. But it's also important to consider just how unprepared humans have been in recent years for crisis that were absolutely serious, but were a hell of a lot more predictable than meeting actual aliens. From extreme weather to the COVID-19 pandemic to the global repercussions of wars fought around the world, modern civilization just isn't exactly known for its ability to quickly or capably react to these situations, is it? It's also not known for its tendency to come together, even despite common fictional tropes that imagine a world uniting to fight back against an alien adversary. One group at least hopes to improve humankind's readiness for alien contact. The SETI Institute, or Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, is in the process of getting a new team off the ground, a so-called post-detection hub that would unite experts and researchers from around the world in order to start developing the policies and procedures that would kick into effect after humans found an alien artifact, encountered a clearly non-natural radio signal, or received an in-person visitor. Growing team, under the leadership of a computational linguist named Dr. John Elliott, will add on to SETI's existing procedures for receiving evidence of alien life, including informing the public and reaching out to the General Secretary of the United Nations. Elliott hopes to weigh the potential societal implications of first contact against the best routes to distribute information about a newly discovered cosmic neighbor, and possibly even get the UN to take their their own steps towards global policy on aliens. And that means we have to include non-linguistic communication as well. The prospect of learning to speak an alien language is one that's been tackled in fiction, including in the recently produced movie Arrival, which uh, you can ever watch if you want a homework assignment. It's a good movie, check it out. But in real life, humans have been more focused on sending signals into space that could be easily decipherable. For example, plaques placed on the Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 spacecraft in the 1970s included images of humans as well as a map that should explain to an alien where in our solar system we happen to be located. The Arecibo message sent in binary code in 1970s 
1974 to a star cluster tried to use maths to explain who humans are. But the signals that we send to other worlds aren't necessarily the ones that we expect to receive. On the one hand, it's entirely possible that an advanced civilization might do our work for us, observing humans and decoding our many languages well enough that they could simply land a ship in front of the Eiffel Tower and start speaking French. It's also feasible that aliens would attempt to communicate by non-linguistic means, for example by firing a laser into space at such short intervals that nothing in the universe could naturally produce them, a rate around a billion blinks per second. Or they can blink in straight but consistent patterns in order to indicate that their origins are natural. But even if an extraterrestrial were to, let's say, be forced to make an unintentional stop in Mexico or Mumbai, people would probably be able to speak to them before too long. After all, humans have a long history of learning to speak each other's languages, even with no base of understanding, including in first contact scenarios where one group's language uses sounds and tones that are utterly unlike those of the other. As unlikely as it is, humans could probably muddle their way through an alien language that doesn't even even involve the use of sound at all, starting with mutually understood concepts, like, for example, sharing each other's method to refer to the door on the alien spaceship, and then working upward to expand their vocabularies, learn syntax, and troubleshoot in order to make sure that everyone thinks they're having the same basic conversation. Of course, there's also a possibility that an extraterrestrial civilization would communicate in ways that we simply have no capacity to understand, in which case humanity might just be shit out of luck until we or the aliens can think of some genius solution. Now, we gotta take a second and understand the sheer magnitude of what we're talking about here. It is incredibly rare that humanity comes into contact with the sort of new idea that violates everything we thought we understood about the world, like the concept of the universe being not heliocentric, or a theory of disease that understands the existence of bacteria and viruses. At a bare minimum, a public, visible incident of first contact with extraterrestrials would be just as revolutionary, and depending on how that encounter goes, it's the sort of thing that could reshape history itself. No more BC, no more AD. It could be before first contact and then after galactic awakening. As Smithsonian Magazine put it in a 2010 article by Sarah Zelensky, human reactions would likely fall into two categories. The catastrophists and the millenarians. The catastrophists are exactly what they sound like. People who would interpret the arrival of aliens as an existential threat. They count among their number people like Stephen Hawking, who expressed more than once in his life that an alien species would not necessarily necessarily be a good thing for the people of Earth. The millenarians take the opposite approach, hoping that a civilization that can reach our planet is also capable of doing some other things that we haven't figured out yet. Curing diseases, harnessing the power of nuclear fusion, or unlocking the potential to travel faster than the speed of light. But whether aliens were to be benevolent intergalactic partners, or malevolent conquerors, or simply just indifferent to the pain and suffering that they may cause, the simple confirmation of their existence would still carry a whole other list of implications that permeate every level of society. It would change the way we imagine ourselves, the technologies that define us, the ways we keep ourselves safe and well and happy. Every preconceived notion of who we thought we were would immediately face the prospect of change. So why don't we start with perhaps one of the thorniest issues in that realm? Religion. In the vast majority of global religions, creation mythology relates directly to the birth of the human race, with no real room or allowances for E.T. So too do many religious doctrines contain detailed teachings that implicitly and quite fundamentally disqualify the existence of alien life beyond this world. Because of this, some theologians and sociologists alike suspect that confirmation of an alien race would prompt a crisis of faiths around the world. One study carried out by theologian Ted Peters showed that while many religious people surveyed did not themselves believe that the discovery of extraterrestrials would supersede their own religious beliefs, they did believe that such an event could lead to a broader reckoning in society. Other thinkers, though, take the opposite approach, that world religions would be able to shift and weather the introduction of extraterrestrial intelligence without contradicting the basic human understanding of a higher power, in much the same way as religion has, if a bit unhappily, weathered the introduction of the theories of evolution. Religious doctrine may morph or emphasize nuance in order to accommodate an alien race, with religious organizations perhaps even using their role as representatives of billions or hundreds of millions of people to take the lead in working with otherworldly visitors. Other theorists wonder whether the introduction of extraterrestrial ideas, technologies, and the like might even prompt the end of human religion or a replacement with something else, while still others see the change as having the potential to relegate human religious texts to the same status as archaeological items. And then there's the implications for how world governments might react, especially in a world where global powers can't see eye to eye 
even on their best days. Perhaps the news that humans don't speak with one unified voice as one unified nation would be something of a disappointment to advanced societies who've put their petty divisions in the past. But disappointing or not, those petty differences might not go away anytime soon. On the one hand, there's a possibility that some crackpot dictator somewhere would end up making everybody look bad, launching a conventional or even a nuclear weapon in an attempt to scare our alien friends off. But a more likely source of conflict is the series of decisions that would need to be made in order to allow someone to speak for humanity. For a choice that important, it's not inconceivable that some countries might be willing to spill blood to come to a resolution, especially if these extraterrestrials don't appear to be the sort of existential threats that might cause the world to unite in global defense. Even without bloodshed, first contact would be a bureaucratic nightmare, with every major nation on Earth attempting to reconcile their own demands with the demands of everybody else in order to pick a representative that everyone can agree is a least worst option. With humanity's luck, it'll probably be fucking Elon Musk, won't it? And then we're all gonna be in trouble. And there's also legal problems to consider, which we're going to illustrate with a fairly simple scenario. Let's say Blork the alien envoy steps out of his ship, briefcase in hand, and he's ready to do business. And the owner of the farm where he crash landed immediately shoots him in the head. Was Blork murdered? Did he legally exist at all? Or has this farmer just stumbled upon a strange collection of salvageable items from outer space? If he has, does the government have any right to claim and reverse engineer Blork the deceased alien envoy's warp drive, or do they have to pay this farmer several trillion dollars to get their hands on it? The treatment of extraterrestrials and their technology, questions of personhood and sentience and more, would all become difficult issues in their own right. And, of course, uh, we've got to account for the core problem of first contact on our own world. The spread of disease, however unintentionally, for which a contact to society has no way to guard against. Perhaps an alien civilization would arrive bringing viruses, or parasites, or invasive animals that could upend not just individual lives, but global ecology. We would hope that any civilization intelligent enough to get to Earth would also be intelligent enough to come prepared with measures to guard against this, but unfortunately, there might be only one way to find out. But lastly, there's the part where we get to be optimistic. How first contact with another civilization might allow humanity to finally break free of the shackles that have constrained it for millennia. Freedom from disease, from aging, from even the ailment of life inside a physical form could all, hypothetically, be possible. And so too could alien visitors bring the secrets of world peace. They could end world hunger, they could reverse the effects of climate change to preserve the planet we call home. Our understanding of physics, biology, and spacefaring technologies could be turned on their heads, and the coming not just of artificial intelligence, but a society that's already learned how to manage it for the better of all people could teach us how to cope with the new and emerging technologies of our own time, or maybe bypass them completely. Will extraterrestrials ever come to visit Earth? We can't say for sure. Have they been already? Uh, we might find out sooner rather than later. But whatever it happens, however it happens, and if it happens at all, that first contact with a civilization beyond our own will be an event on the scale of the greatest moments in all of history. What happens next will be unlike anything that we've ever seen.